Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we're going to be constructing a brand new rocket and a brand new satellite to fulfill even more contracts on the way towards getting something moon ready. Uh, overall, our, our short term goal right now is to be able to launch things at the moon and either orbit it, fly by, or impact it. And this is something that we're, we've been trying for a few episodes. However, it just doesn't look like we have um, the technology. Once we get a little bit more research unlocked, and once we have a little bit more funds, because we've actually been starting to get pretty low on funds as well, uh, once those two problems are fixed, this is going to be happening. Um, however, uh, it, it did seem like in the meantime, I had to wait for more funds and wait for more science. And at this point, this was after waiting for a few more science nodes to unlock and pretty much just warping until those nodes unlocked. And um, we no longer have anything being researched right now. We don't have enough science to unlock any more nodes. So this is something we're going to be looking at as well, possibly getting into high orbit so we can get some more science. But in the meantime, we needed to acquire some more funds. And that's what this rocket, uh, the Losa Clio, looks to complete. Now the Losa Clio stands for Long Term Observational Science and Communications in Low Earth Orbit. Kind of a mouthful. Um, but this was pretty much designed because there are some contracts besides the Mooner contracts just to send something into sort of a high orbit, but not, not really too high, and have a little bit of payload, um, a certain science instrument on board, and those contracts are going to be used up as much as possible uh, to gain as much funds as possible. Um, in order for this to be successful, we actually, for the first time in the playthrough, looked at tooling of the procedural parts, the decouplers, and things like that. And essentially, uh, what I came to the conclusion of, um, the tooling is basically making parts cheaper if you use the exact same uh, dimensions of the part. Um, so for instance, Losa Clio costs 59,433 funds. Um, however, it, it would only cost 9,606 um, funds if all of the parts were tooled. Now, the cost of tooling all the parts is 109,566 funds. However, um, after two launches, it still um, saves money tooling it. That 109,000 is still worth it. You will it'll be 9,912 funds after launch two that it saves, and after that, it just saves more and more. So, if you are using the exact same rocket over and over, which I knew I designed this to be used over and over. Um, it becomes cheaper and cheaper as time goes on, which is essential because otherwise this rocket would cost about as much money as we'd be gaining with the contract and we'd be sort of at a standstill. So the rocket's tooled, it was good to go. The rocket it consists of five RD-108s on the first stage, an RD-103 on the second stage, a new AJ-10 the first time we're using that on the third stage, and the fourth and final stage is an engine I believe we used before. It's the only one that can, we can relight. We can re relight it four times. Uh, I believe it's an X-plane engine. Um, and that is actually essential because the flight plan leaves the actual satellite in orbit um, highly eccentric though. So low Earth um, periapsis, I think around 200,000 meters, and then several million meters um, apogee, that engine that is able to be relit four times can alter um, the plane, uh, sorry, the inclination, and can also circularize the orbit. Um, so this is the overall rocket design, kind of an interesting solar panel um, situation on the both sides. It's able to orient itself, and in theory it will be able to perform its duties without any problems. There was only one thing that was stopping us from being able to build this right away. And that was um, the AJ-10. It was a brand new engine, and so we needed to do some ground tests in order to get some data on it so our reliability isn't low. So that's what you're seeing here. Uh, we, we ran three tests with the AJ-10 and got about 
a little less than halfway to full reliability. But um, after this is complete, we build Losa Clio for real. And the first launch of this one is not going to fulfill any contracts. This one is just going to um, basically test the vehicle itself and get some more data on the engines. So this is the 31st of May, 1961. And this launch, like I said, isn't fulfilling any contracts. However, uh, this, this mission has been simulated many times. And in the simulations, we actually gain a lot of funds. Um, however, you'll see here, <laughs> the launch did not go as planned. One of the 108s actually exploded on the launch pad. Um, and I wish I could say this was the first time that happened, but it's not. Uh, the launch pad cost about 12,000 funds to repair, which really hurt our, our funds down to 69,000 funds. And here we have the second launch on the 15th of August, 1961. Uh, from the reports of the simulations of this actually working correctly, um, there were a few problems with Losa Clio, which means it doesn't last very long. You'll see here, actually, here's our other problem with the RD-108. One of them actually failed mid-launch. However, because of the high thrust of the other one, it was able to keep itself oriented with the gimbals. When I noticed it started slipping, I simply shut down the other side. However, it didn't do this quick enough. Um, and because we lost all of that thrust and all that delta V from carrying the empty fuel that didn't get burned off, this rocket actually does not make it into orbit. It falls short and burns up in the atmosphere while trying to circularize. Now, because of the way I make things, I have zero control of the rocket until the payload is released. Um, it's all running on a KOS script until that point. So it is holding at 10 degrees and I, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, but going back to why the Losa Clio doesn't really last that long, it's not meant for a long-term communications um, because the Able Avionics Unit drains electricity like crazy. I could add more solar panels and probably counter this entirely, but I didn't want to make it look too ridiculous. You'll see here we've got um, 24612. Yeah, here it's burning up in the atmosphere. 12 of those solar panels um, counters it pretty well. However, drain is still an issue. This is when I mentioned uh, it burned up in the atmosphere. What, um, what happened was we went past our apoapsis and back down into the atmosphere while trying to circularize. This launch here is the 30th of October, 1961. It's the third launch of Losa uh, Clio. Hopefully, hopefully this one will work perfectly fine. A few things to note about the rocket itself, other than the electricity drain, which means it only has four days lifetime, is that the thrust to weight ratio on the pad is barely over one. It, it takes a little bit to actually get off the launch pad. It's not as noticeable in the footage here since it's four times as fast, but it definitely is a slow crawl off the launch pad. However, the ascent commences flawlessly and there is no real problem. Um, it is capable of reaching a 14 million meter apogee uh, if flown. Um, it was capable in simulations. I'm not really sure. I think I changed the KOS script, so it's not able to do that anymore, but it's roughly 10 millimeters of apogee if flown perfectly. Another thing um, I noticed with the one engine that we have that is able to relight, it uses liquid oxygen. And if you're not aware, the liquid oxygen boils off when you're outside of the atmosphere, when you're in space. So essentially you can't save that fuel for the next stage to relight after a long period of time. You kind of have to use it as soon as possible or the fuel is going to boil off and you'll lose all of it, all of its capability. Something else about the, the rocket that I could do a little bit better is there is way too much HTP than it will ever use, so I could reduce that by a significant amount and maybe boost Delta V 100 or so, maybe less. There aren't many other notable features about Losa Clio, especially on this run, because like I mentioned before, this is sort of the bare bones run of the rocket to make sure that it can successfully make it into orbit when all its engines light correctly. 
this I'm doing this before adding any payload or any science equipment to help with funds and also like I said we don't even need this to accept a contract because of all the world records this this first flight sets we actually gain 164,000 roughly funds which is a resounding success in my mind you see here we are circularizing the low earth orbit um, but because of the engine it's burning right now only has one ignition we're actually burning it through all the way and i believe it reaches an apoapsis of like nine million meters let's check here uh, roughly roughly eight or nine million meters and um the last engine here that's able to be relit is actually only going to be lit one time because of the aforementioned boil off of the liquid oxygen that I mentioned. But it is, it does have enough delta V to circularize at that altitude still. So after that launch, four days after liftoff, the satellite goes dead. But until then, um, we can monitor that the Losa Cleo satellite is successfully in orbit of Earth. Next episode, we will be looking at completing some actual contracts with Losa Cleo now that we know it's at least capable of being successful. So far, its track record is one out of three, and that's not great. However, each launch has secured pretty much the most reliability um, data that we can muster for these engines. So the chance of success is, I think, as high as it's going to get. And with the, the contracts that we're going to be able to fulfill with this uh, satellite, it's going to give us a bunch of funds to bolster our progress towards um, lunar impact, lunar flyby, and lunar orbit. And that's our short-term goal. That's as far as our contracts are reaching. Um, but with that, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And peace out.